Hey YouTube, today I'm going to be doing a quick video showing you guys how to replace the six spark plugs in your J35 series engine in your Honda Odyssey covering model years 2002 all the way through present day. Now this model here is actually a 2008 or a second gen Odyssey but they all fundamentally use the same exact J35 engine and the engine bay layout is nearly identical. So before we begin our spark plug replacement procedure, we need to gather up a couple of tools and supplies before even starting this job. Number one is you want to start off with a roll of paper towel. You want to start off with your replacement parts. And then you need to have a flat bladed screwdriver so that you can undo the engine top cover. A 3 8 drive ratchet with a variety of extensions. So in this case I've got I believe a 3 inch, 4 inch and I think 8 inch extension bar a 5 8 inch spark plug socket with the appropriate rubber insert to hold the spark plug in place. Now one of the things I've seen all too often is that rubber insert falls out on a lot of people's sockets and then what happens is when you try to actually undo the spark plug and remove it from the spark plug tube that it never holds the spark plug in place and therefore you can never get it out of the engine properly. A quarter inch drive ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket so that you can undo the securing nuts holding each ignition coil pack to the valve cover. And then finally we want to get ourselves some nickel based anti-seize so that we can coat the spark plug threads on reinstallation. Now one thing I want to stress here is that you want to use nickel based anti-seize and never copper based on spark plugs especially when you're putting it into an aluminum head. You don't want to have galvanic corrosion um, seize your new plugs into the engine. Now because the van I'm working on is actually a 2008 uh, Honda Odyssey, it actually uses a slightly different VCM engine than say 2005 through 2007. Um, it uses a longer spark plug and the part number for 08 through 2010 is 12290-R70-A01. Now the other thing I want to mention here is that I am using the Honda branded plugs which is actually supplied by NGK so you can go and buy the NGK equivalent. Um, the price for me to buy from local Honda versus aftermarket parts place like O'Reilly's is exactly the same price so why not get them from the dealership because you know they're right. If you want an NGK part number it is actually a ILZ KR7B11. We'll begin the procedure by taking our flat bladed screwdriver and turning the two sort of turn style screws um, counterclockwise 90 degrees and then to remove the engine cover you just grab it near the center line and then carefully lift up and the cover just comes off and it's actually just held in with these rubber grommets right here so there's a grommet here and a grommet here which by the way they should actually be pulled off that's what they look like give you a close up. They sometimes pop off these, they stay on these pegs. So the idea here is that you want to take these grommets and you want to place them back into the holes on the engine intake manifold. So there's one here and one here. We can go ahead and disconnect the three, I guess, wiring harness connectors on each of the plugs or on each of the ignition coils that correspond to each cylinder on this front bank. Now, uh, you don't have to worry about mixing up the spark plug order because you can't really screw up a pigtail connector that's only maybe three inches long. Now to remove the connector from the ignition coil, what you want to do is you actually want to press down on the connector um, and then press on the tab and then pull up. And the idea behind that is um, there's a little tab on the ignition coil that locks into the connector piece. And if you don't I guess it's, it's, you can visualize it like this, so that, that tab goes into that hole and when you press on that tab the idea is that it's supposed to lift up so that you can pull over it. But if it's jammed up like this with some tension it's really hard for that this flexible and flimsy plastic connector to release. So if you push down it gives it more room like this which allows it to pivot up and then pull. So you usually have to use two hands. You want to always make sure you pull by the connector head and never by the actual wiring. And I also recommend that when you do this procedure that you do it with the engine cold. Um, it gives you more accurate torque values and it's also more pleasant to work on. You're not burning yourself. So once we've removed the ignition coil connectors, 
We're going to go and take a 10 millimeter ratchet and we're going to undo the three 10 millimeter nuts, one per coil that secures it to the valve cover. They're not very tight and you shouldn't require a lot of force to remove and you sh certainly shouldn't over tighten them when you reinstall them. And this is what they look like. You can then just wiggle and gently lift each coil out. Now this is what that little tab I was telling you about looks like. It's like a nub that that little connector tab goes over. So you want to push down and then flex it and then pull away so you don't break that connector end. Now to remove the spark plug, we're going to take our spark plug socket and our extension. We're going to clip it on and then without having the ratchet handle on it, we're going to feed it down into the spark plug tube and then twist it around until it catches the plug. Then we attach the ratchet onto the socket end. The reason why we do this is so that you have enough clearance to actually get everything apart properly. So once you've loosened it, carefully maneuver the plug out. Now these Honda plugs, or these NGK plugs, come from the factory pre-gapped. So all we have to do is we need to apply a thin coat of anti-seize to the threaded portion of the plug, and then just inspect the plug to make sure there's no damage to the ceramic insulator, and make sure that there's no damage to the plug threads, that we just apply a small amount. You can see that, you just apply a thin coat, making sure you don't get any on the washer or on the electro tip. And then just carefully do the reverse of how you removed it. Gently place it down the spark plug tube and make sure that you always hand thread it in as far as you can first. Never try to tighten it with the ratchet right from the get go because you can run the risk of cross threading. Because there's a crush washer on the end of the spark plug, so just so you guys know, the end of the plug here has a washer, which means when you begin to feel it crushing as you're tightening it down, that you just turn it another quarter turn, which translates to, to about 12 to 16 foot pounds, if memory serves me correctly. The other thing that people ask me is, do you need to use a torque wrench? I strongly advise against it because most DIY folks do not have ultra precision torque wrenches, which means that you guys may have a torque wrench that says it's, it's 12 to 16 pounds, when in reality you're probably over torquing it um, and you'll end up stripping the threads in the head. Use common sense and tighten it that way. So I've felt the washer crush and I'm just going to give it a slight turn, which turns out to be just less than a quarter turn. And we're done. We go ahead, we install our coil pack. We attach our securing nut. And just snug up the 10 millimeter retaining nut. Moving on to the rear engine bank, it might be useful to get a stool or something to help sort of get you some height um, into the engine bay. And the whole idea behind that is that the spark plugs, well this engine for example is designed to be symmetrical, but I can't even show you on a camera what this back bank looks like other than just to suggest to my viewers that you have to almost feel or repair by feeling how the uh, back plugs are. And it's actually quite easy. You can either work from the sides or wherever, and it'll basically, it'll be very obvious if that makes any sense. Now on the back ones, I actually recommend you do one coil and one plug at a time, just so you don't lose your bearings as to where things go. But you can see, I'm just kind of leaning over, and I just send on the full retaining nut. 
I've even lifted up the coil pack to give me better access to the connector. Squeeze the tab and pull out. Again, much like how we did the front, we're going to stick our spark plug socket and extension down into the tube and then work by feel. Now the other benefit of why you'd want to change your spark plugs at the very minimum every 100,000 miles or 160,000 kilometers is to ensure that the plugs don't actually season the head. I've actually known guys where they've run a motor and their spark plugs for literally hundreds of thousands of miles without ever looking at it only to have the plug season the aluminum head and then at that point you're gonna have to take your car to a shop or do it yourself and remove the head for a repair not cheap not fun not easy so here's our back plug applying a nice thin even coat of anti-seize uh, just carefully feeling out the motor and guiding your new plug in. We install our ignition coil. Plug it back in. Coil retaining nut. And then on to the next plug. So now that we've replaced all six plugs and our engine bay is free of any tools and parts, we can go ahead and fire this motor right up. Now, given how simple this repair can be, I'd be surprised if it didn't start or we ran into problems. So now that everything has been reinstalled properly and We've test fired the motor, we can go ahead and reinstall this plastic cosmetic engine cover. Now, uh, earlier when we removed it, we had some rubber grommets sort of stuck on these little pegs and we've put them back into the intake manifold where they belong. And so to reinstall this, you just want to make sure that these, um, these slots here are pointed vertically on each side. And then we're going to line up those pegs onto the rubber grommet. And you can feel it when you place it on and line up sort of the cutouts that you can press down and it should just pop right in. Then we can secure the front of it by turning the plastic screws 90 degrees such that they are oriented horizontally across the engine bay. 